Welcome back, everyone, for another deep dive. Today, we're tackling a question that I think has crossed all of our minds at some point, how to boost our intelligence. And to help us unlock these secrets, we'll be diving into some fascinating insights from the Mind Matters podcast. That's right. We're going way beyond those static IQ tests and looking at real, actionable habits you can use starting today. Habits that can actually help us tap into our brain's natural power. Um, <laughs> all ears. So the Mind Matters podcast, they gave us five key areas to focus on, right? They did. And we're going to explore each one, pick out the highlights, and most importantly, see how it applies to you. Love it. So should we just jump right in? Let's do it. All right. First up, we've got read regularly. Now, I know this one might seem like a no-brainer, but the podcast really digs into the why, which I found super interesting. It's true. Reading, it's not just about absorbing information. It's like a workout for your brain. It strengthens those neural connections, builds cognitive reserve, really important for keeping your brain sharp as you age. Well, wait, hold on. Did you say protects against age-related decline? Okay, you've got my attention. But it can't just be reading anything, right? Like if I'm reading through a stack of celebrity gossip magazines, that's probably not doing much for my cognitive function, right? You're exactly right. It's about variety, mixing things up. Think of it this way. If you only ever exercised one arm, sure, it would get stronger, but the other would be neglected. Reading a mix of genres and topics is like a full body workout for your brain. So reading, let's say, a blend of fiction, nonfiction, maybe even something outside my usual interests that actually helps create more diverse connections in my brain. Exactly. It helps you make new and unexpected connections, leading to, you guessed it, greater creativity. Wow, that is really cool. I'm already feeling smarter. So more reading, more diversely check. What's next? Well, that brings us to our next point, which is all about embracing that feeling of the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. We're talking about practicing curiosity. Oh, man, this one resonates with me. It can be a little daunting sometimes, though, right? Like you start digging into a topic and realize just how much more there is to learn. It makes you feel kind of small, you know. And yet that's what's so great about it. It keeps you engaged, your brain hungry for more. That spark of curiosity, it's like the fuel for lifelong learning. Okay, I love that analogy. Mm -hmm. But how do you actually practice curiosity? I feel like as adults, we often lose that childlike wonder about the world around us. It's true, but the podcast mentioned a really simple yet powerful tip. Remember how kids are constantly asking why and how? Tapping back into that mindset can make a world of difference. That's so true. I remember driving my parents crazy with all those questions. So we're talking about approaching things with that same sense of wonder and asking those fundamental questions like we did as children. All right, I'm ready to channel my inner five-year-old. What's next on our brain-boosting journey? Well, are you ready to step outside of that comfort zone? I think so. Bring it on. Good. Because next up, we're talking about challenge yourself. No more coasting along in those comfortable routines. It's time to shake things up. So no more binge watching the same show for the 10th time. Well, maybe in moderation. But seriously, our brains, they thrive on novelty, on problem solving. It's how we adapt and grow. Think of it like this. If you never push past those self-imposed limits, your brain gets stuck in a rut. And nobody wants a rutted brain. The podcast mentioned something really interesting about challenges, though, and it kind of surprised me. They said that even failing can be beneficial. Absolutely. Those setbacks, those failures, they force your brain to adapt and find new solutions. It's all part of the process. Every attempt, every challenge is like a workout for your mind. You're building resilience, you're learning from your mistakes, and you're coming out stronger on the other side. So instead of being afraid to fail, we should embrace those challenges head on. Precisely. Those stumbles, they often lead to the most incredible breakthroughs. Now, speaking of things we often overlook... Sleep. <laughs> because I can definitely relate to that. You know me too well. It's prioritize sleep. And honestly, this is one I need to take to heart myself. You and me both. The podcast really drove home how crucial sleep is. It's not just about feeling rested, is it? There's something more going on. So much more. Sleep, it's like a nightly system reboot for our brains. That's when magic happens. Memory consolidation detoxification. It's crucial. A system reboot, huh? I like the sound of that. But what about those times when we don't prioritize sleep? What impact does that have? You know, speaking from experience, of course. Oh, we've all been there. Think about those mornings after a rough night. You know, you can barely think straight. Mm, tell me about it. My coffee maker works overtime on those days. Exactly. Sleep deprivation, it affects everything. Focus, memory, decision making. It's like trying to run your car on fumes. 
You might keep going for a bit, but you're headed for trouble. Okay, yeah, that's a scary thought. I guess I need to rethink my relationship with my pillow. <laughs> it's a game changer, really. And that leads us to our final area, a bit broader, but just as crucial, live a healthy lifestyle. Okay, so we're talking diet, exercise, the whole shebang. You got it. Each piece matters. Think of it like taking care of a car. You wouldn't expect it to run smoothly without the right fuel maintenance, right? Good point. So what kind of fuel should we be putting in our bodies for, you know, peak brain performance? The podcast really highlighted foods rich in omega-3 fatty acids. Those are like superfoods for your brain. Brain food, got it. Bring on the salmon. What about exercise? I vaguely remember that being good for us too, right? Absolutely. Exercise is like a breath of fresh air for your brain, literally. Increases blood flow, helps with memory, thinking, everything. A two-for-one deal. Good for the body, good for the brain. I'm seeing a theme here. Exactly. And we can't forget about stress management, meditation, deep breathing, even just taking a few minutes to unwind those. Do wonders for mental clarity. Creating that optimal environment for our brains to thrive. We've covered a lot. What stood out to you so far? What's been the most interesting or surprising point? That's a tough one. I think for me, it's how interconnected all these elements are. It's not about finding one magic bullet. It's about weaving all these habits together, a holistic approach, you know? That's a really good point. It's like we've been given all these puzzle pieces, and now it's up to us to put them together. Exactly. And the best part is this is for everyone. It doesn't matter your age or background. These tools and strategies are available to anyone who wants to boost their brain power. I love that. <laughs> it's never too late to start investing in our cognitive health, right? But what about someone who might be feeling a bit overwhelmed with all this information? I mean, it's a lot to take in. Oh, for sure. It's easy to feel like you need to change your whole life overnight. But even small, consistent changes can lead to big results. Start with one habit, one small step at a time. Small steps, yeah. I like that. It's a marathon, not a sprint, right? Mm. We don't have to become like brain-boosting experts overnight. Exactly. And, you know, even just being aware of these strategies, that's a huge first step. It's about making those conscious choices, the ones that support our brain health. So we started with this simple question, right? How to boost intelligence. Right. And wow, look where we are. This incredible journey of exploring our brain's potential. And the journey doesn't have to end here. This deep dive, it's given you the tools, the knowledge to keep going. It really is empowering when you think about it. Mm -hmm. We have more control over our intelligence than we might think. Absolutely. Forget about chasing some fixed IQ score. Yeah. It's all about continually challenging and nurturing our minds you know, throughout our lives. It really is like we've been given this amazing gift, our brain, and now we have the knowledge, the power to help it thrive. I say slain. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave you with this. Think about those five areas we talked about. Which one excites you the most right now? What's one small step, any step that you can take today to challenge your brain? Keep that curiosity alive and you'll be amazed at what you can achieve.